Last week, EY India decided to split its audit and consulting business. This is said to have an enormous impact on the firms, their executives, and even the Indian companies. Carmine DCBO, EY's global CEO and chairman, said that the firm would be split into two, including in India. This creates a unique problem for the firm in India, as it is the biggest in the country. And like the philosophical question in the ship of thesis, the real question is, which firm will be the real EY? So we'll try to answer these questions in the following video. So what will happen to EY? Two major issues that EY is set to face if it splits its consulting and audit business. These issues would be around the branding and the salaries of the employees or executives, especially the partners. Now, as we understand, some of our sources tell us that the initial discussions indicate that the audit bit will be called EY and the consulting uh, part or the, or the consulting firm would probably be renamed or rebranded. Now, this would also probably result into certain issues in India, mainly because in India, foreign firms are not allowed directly, although th there's some ambiguity around that. Now, as far as Indian regulations are concerned, if the brand retain, if the audit firm retains the brand, this could create some complications in India. What will happen to the salaries? Now, if the firm is split into two, there, there will be winners and losers, at least in the short term. The audit partners will see the salaries going up, or at least in the short term, they could see the compensation, uh, one-time uh, compensation increasing. But many of the partners would probably get two to three times the annual salary in, in one go. Now, on the other hand, uh, the consulting partners uh, would see the salaries going down. Now, this is mainly because the consulting partners would get equity uh, in, in, in the consulting arm. It will raise some debt and it will try to settle some of the pension liability and some of the partner liability going ahead. While the firm split will put to rest the conflict of interest debate that has been hounding global professional services, it will create unique problems for the firm. Interestingly, many partners are discussing who will be the new India CEO. Raji Memani, India's head, has run the firm efficiently and one of the few territories where the global firm retains the number one position. Now let's talk about the impact on the big four. Currently, the big four firms dominate the global services sector with more than $150 billion in combined revenue. Deloitte, PwC, EY, KPMG are a force to reckon with. In India, the big four also have a total revenue of Rs 22,000 crore. EY India has a top line of more than 88,000 crore. There could be pressure on other three firms to split uh, uh, similarly uh, the way EY is splitting. Deloitte Global CEO Purit Ranjan has gone on record to say that the firm is not going to split going ahead. The firm in India along with PwC has already given assurances to the government that it is not going to accept any work for the audit clients. That is they are already they claim that they don't do any consulting work as far as the audit clients are concerned. If this is one of the concerns that global regulators including Indian regulators have with the large professional services firms. However, what happens on ground is very different. Many large firms also uh, tend to rope in their executives or uh, their, uh, their partners in other consultancy bit, uh, for instance the corporate investigators, to look into certain accounts, especially where they find some suspicious transactions. Obviously this is done with the permission of the client, but something like this, if the firm were to split will not be possible going ahead. Also, some of the firms are accused of cross-selling, which means that they might be pushing some of the services to the audit clients. Now, uh, some of the Indian regulators have raised this question in the past, but if the firms were to split, something like this will not arise at all. Now, one of the other things that could happen uh, as far as the big four are concerned is that some of the new firms or, or rather some of the smaller firms, smaller firms which have a global brand names such as the BDO and Grand Thornton could now try to capture the market share especially in certain areas like uh, auditing or certain tax especially where uh, EY may have to vacate certain space going ahead. 
The split will lead to more complications for the audit industry. The real question is, who are the losers and winners? The EY splitting its audit and consulting business will also impact Indian companies. Also, for many multinationals operating in the country who tend to have one of the big four firms as an auditor, the split only leads to more complications. One more thing that could happen is that EY itself may have to uh, resign in, uh, from certain engagements or may have to realign its portfolio not just because of conflict of interest but also because of the profitability. See right now what many firms do is just to get some marquee names they operate at a very very uh, wafer thin margins. Now but if EY uh, the audit arm were to sustain itself, it may have to relook at its portfolio. It may have to resign into uh, from certain audit of certain assignments. Whether it does this or whether it uh, comes out with something else will is yet to be seen. But whatever happens from here on, it is very clear that some of the Indian audit firms as well as some of the Indian specialized firms such as some of the firms that uh, uh, that are that are in the niche uh, like the taxation or advisory may get may get a headroom to compete with the big boys or the big four in india thanks for watching this video if you have any suggestions please put that in the comment section and please follow our youtube channel